basically just an antibiotic okay. um, ointment that kind of sticks to your stitches and will protect them from a temporary splint. Okay. You don't really realize how radical the operation is until you actually see it. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, wow. I heard y'all in here laughing. Oh, yeah. I was telling him my story mm -hmm. about how I used to be in alternative health research and traveled all over the world. And I used those powerful magnets to help speed the healing and cut down mm -hmm. on the pain. I'm not a real fan of doing drugs. And so the fewer pain pills I have to take, the better. Well, today I wanted to just go ahead and take a look at my hand and see how it's doing. It's uh, day six from having uh, the surgery. And I wanted to show you the different powerful magnets that I've been using. This is a medical magnet, ceramic. This is a medical magnet. Um, this is also a medical magnet that I've used. And these are a therapeutic magnets. Uh, then you can see just how powerful these magnets are. It's hard to get them off. And, uh, I mean, it really is incredible. And so I've used all of these on my hand to just uh, uh, decrease the swelling and decrease the pain. So today I'm going to take it off and just see just how my hand looks. Because I haven't seen it since Friday when they actually take the other cast off. So I'm going to unwind it here and then just see how it looks. So take this off here. And then this is some gauze that they used to provide antibiotics. So that's what it looks like now. And so I don't see any inflammation and uh, it's still, you know, pretty sore. I've been very effective with the magnets in keeping the pain down. And then also I have to thank everybody for their prayers because I really haven't had that much pain. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and treat my hand with a uh, instrument, a uh, $10,000 uh, microcurrent instrument that I used to work on uh, patients with pain and injuries in doctor's offices for 20 years all over the world. I have got one of my own and so I'm going to work on my hand with that and just see if I can speed the healing. I'm going to work on it every day just to see if the electroacroscope can really make a difference on how fast my hand heals. This is a close-up of what my hand looks like. Um, let's see how close I can get. You can see the sutures and uh, just how extensive the surgery is. And so that hurts when I do that. So I guess I'm stretching the scar tissue. So hopefully um, the acroscope will help speed the healing and cut down on the adhesions. So I'm looking forward to doing that. I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so here we go. I've got uh, two electrolode, electro, electrodes and I'm going to dip them in the, uh, in the solution that makes them work. And then I'm going to put them on either side of the injury. Stay away from getting the solution on the on the wounds themselves until I actually get the uh, the stitches out. But you get the general idea. So I'm going to go through and work over my entire hand with this uh, um, device, this biomedical instrument, and facilitate the healing and just see if I can heal it up in half the time that it would normally take to heal surgery as much as this. 
and just see if I can speed the healing. I'm going to work on it every day just to see if the electroacroscope can really make a difference on how fast my hand heals. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody that's been praying for my hand for its healing and for minimum amount of pain. It really seems to be working and using the electroacroscope and continuing to use the magnets seem to be helping my hand heal at an accelerated rate. Um, one of the things that I've discovered is that it's very humbling to not be able to use both your hands. I can't drive, uh, it's hard to put on, I can't put on my shoes, I can't cut anything, it's hard to wash dishes. I mean, it truly is amazing how valuable it is to use your other hand, to actually use both hands. It's a good thing I learned uh, back in 1980, the value of using your right hand and your left hand by choice just to increase the integration of your brain and make situations like this not so onerous because you actually can use your left hand for a lot of things. Well, you can see that uh, my hand is looking better. I've treated it tw once yesterday and I've treated it twice today with the electroacroscope. I can actually bend it halfway without too much pain and that's actually pretty good because it was really hard and painful to bend it yesterday. So I treated it once yesterday, I treated it twice today, I'm going to do another one this evening so that'll be three times. So each day I'm going to treat my hand three times a day with the electroacroscope just to see how fast I can get it to heal. So I'm grateful to have one and it truly is amazing on how effective it is in decreasing pain and speeding the healing. Well, here's the latest update on my hand. I've been working on it with the acroscope two to three times a day and the tissue looks pretty good. A lot of the swelling is gone and now the problem is, is that the places where I have the tremendous amount of scabbing, it's trying to crack um, where the healthy skin is and so what I did today is I put some raw aloe vera juice on the scabs and just basically on all the cuts just to help heal the skin and help soften it so that uh, I should be able to bend my hand more, which I can today, and just make sure that I decrease the pain. So uh, something that was pretty funny is that I've been holding my hand uh, in a vertical position as I've been walking up and down the road praying the rosary, and a lot of people have seen me for like six months doing that, and I just happened to raise my head, and now everybody is waving at me as I'm walking along. So. I guess just raising your hand and then smiling at people causes them to smile and wave back. So that's sort of a funny side effect of holding your hand up while it's healing. Well, here's how my hand looks today. I think it's uh, healing pretty good. Still doing the acroscope two to three times a day, but I gave some wrong advice. Um, Dr. Hansen doesn't want me to use aloe vera juice on it because that causes the scabs to not break down so that they can remove the stitches. I go in tomorrow and uh, hopefully I'll get the stitches out. So for the last couple of days, I stopped using aloe vera juice and started washing my hand with uh, water and soap, a light soap, just to try and break up uh, some of the scabs. So I'm hoping to get the stitches out. It seems that uh, my hand hurts more now as it's getting near the further end of the healing process. I guess the stitches are making everything feel pretty tight so I'll let you know what happens tomorrow. Hopefully I'll get a chance to videotape uh, Dr. Hansen taking the stitches out. Well, this morning I got up early. I'm going in to get my stitches out today. So I soaked my hand in really warm water and then just gently rubbed the scabs to try and decrease their size so that I could free up the stitches so they'd be easy to get out. So hopefully I can get them out today. And I put some aloe vera juice on it anyway just because the tissue felt so raw um, without the um, aloe vera juice on it, so I did that. You know what I did is I soaked my hand in water today and then just brushed the scabs until you know they got less and less, mm -hmm. so that they weren't uh, the Stitches weren't, uh, you know, sort of like captured by the scabs themselves. Right. It's great. I figured that would be better because on a lot of them, they're still part of the scabs. Mm-hmm.
What do you do in a situation like that? Um, typically what, what I would have them do is try to wash their hands here before I yeah. um, start trying to remove the stitches. Just because it makes it makes them easier to see, mm -hmm. to get underneath that knot without yeah, yeah. trying to dig around, you yeah, know. And yeah. Yeah, I'm so happy to get them out because it seems like they're at the point where they're restricting the motion. Mm-hmm. Yep. One. That was it? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. You get your band-aid and see. Those act like little stitches. Just... Mm -hmm. Basically, just um, reinforce the skin closure mm -hmm. and um, 
You can leave them on as long as you like. They'll usually just fall off on their own. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, is that it? For now, that's it. Okay. Well, here's how it looks after getting the stitches out. It definitely feels better without the stitches and uh, looks like it needs some serious healing um, in some of the areas without the stitches, but uh, you know, it definitely feels better without the stitches. So I'm excited to uh, be able to work on it with the Accuscope and uh, use aloe vera juice on it to help speed the healing so I'm grateful to get the stitches out well here's what my hand looks like today you can see that uh, it's healing and a lot of the welts are going down I treated it yesterday with the electroacoscope and again this morning and I put some aloe vera juice into the hole right there in my index finger um, where there's a big giant hole just to try and get the clotting to continue and just soften the skin so that the scab won't be so great. So uh, so much feels so much better without the stitches in there. So it's definitely moving ahead with the uh, healing. So I'm very grateful to have the stitches out. Well, here's what my hand looks like today. I've been using aloe vera gel to fill in the big hole in my ring finger at the bottom of my ring finger where that nodule was. And uh, just uh, softening the blood uh, not blood clots, but uh, scabs with uh, aloe vera gel. I'm going to put some more aloe vera gel on it today. I'm going to work on it twice with the electroacoscope. It just really feels so much better without those stitches in there. I'm going to start moving my fingers to see if I can get rid of the swelling in my fingers and uh, just hopefully speed the healing of that uh, big scab. Well, here's how it looks today. The hole in my finger is uh, definitely healing pretty good still looks pretty nasty to say the least so I think I'll cover that up today so it actually looks more gross than just the uh, scabs that were there so it's healing up and uh, still hurts deep inside I guess that's because of the depths of the surgery so uh, it's something else that's that's the truth it's a challenge and uh, thankful that I can use my left hand well, here's what my hand looks like today. It's Tuesday. Yesterday was a pretty rough day. It was an emotional crossover day. My physical and intellectual biorhythms are low. And man, alive on crossover days, the pain was pretty intense. I actually ended up having to take one of the pain pills just because it hurt so much. It seems to be healing pretty good. That big hole at the bottom of my ring finger is uh, definitely taking a while to fill in, but. Uh, actually doing it and I'm trying to use my hand more but boy it really hurts when you have the adhesions inside the hand from the results of the surgery so I'm working away and I uh, came home last night from shooting a video for uh, a friend and uh, man my hand just hurt like crazy so I treated it again with the acuscope I was shifting back to just one a day but it seems like I need two a day just to continue the healing especially on my ring finger um, that seems to be where the healing is needed the most. Well, here's what my hand looks like today. I decided not to put any more aloe vera juice on it just to allow the scab to pull the edges of the wound together. Um, definitely hurts a lot more when I'm not doing the aloe vera, so at night I take one of the pain pills just so I can get to sleep. But it's definitely closing up, so I'm grateful to uh, be able to have it heal and Plus, I'm doing the acuscope still twice a day. That seems to keep the uh, redness down and the swelling and just the irritation, so I'm grateful to have that technology. Well, here's how my hand looks today. I think the hole is definitely filling in, and the uh, scars are starting to heal up too, and uh, scabs are going away. So uh, it looks like what I'm doing is actually working. Uh, my hand still hurts, but... Uh, I think that's a part of the healing process. So I just thank everybody for their prayers and uh, keep it up. 
Well, here's what my hand looks like today. Uh, the scar tissue is seem, seemingly decreasing and uh, the hole in my finger, I'm putting aloe vera gel in there just to keep it moist and to help it fill in and it seems to be filling in quite a bit so I'm very grateful for that and a lot of the scabs are gone. It's still very, very tight. I'm afraid to clench my hand because I don't want to rip open the scab and start bleeding again. So. Thanks for your prayers. It's healing away, and uh, I'm doing the Acoscope twice a day still, and I'm doing the aloe vera juice um, twice a day too, just to uh, keep it moist so that the big hole will have a chance to fill in. I'm going to start doing these and see if I can get my fingers and my hand to uh, be more flexible by moving them this way and then trying to get them to go the other way, which I can't do yet because of the inflexibility of the fingers, but at least this I can do and not have to worry about breaking open the scab. So I've used these before with other wrist injuries, so these are really the greatest. So that's my next step in my rehabilitation. Well, here's what my hand looks like today. I happened upon a good idea. I have a uh, small Dremel tool that has a small disc sander on the end of it. I decided to see what would happen if I ground down the scabs that are still remaining and sure enough it uh, minimized them and uh, one actually came off and I can definitely move my hand better so I don't know if that's a prescribed clinical procedure that you get at your doctor's offices but uh, in home medicine 101 the uh, Dremel tool is definitely happening on getting rid of part of hardened scabs. Well here's what my hand looks like today. Um, the scar tissue is still healing, the scabs are continuing to shrink, and my hand is still pretty tight. My fingers feel like uh, little sausages, so I'm hoping to be able to spend more time using the chi balls to uh, help restore the flexibility in my hand. Well, here's my hand today. The scabs on my palm have come off, and the scab in that big giant hole is still there, but it seems to be filling in pretty good. I just started doing intense massage on my hand and on my fingers to try and get rid of the edema and just break up the uh, scar tissue that's under the skin. So I'm giving my right hand a little bit of love with my left hand and just massaging it a lot and it seems to be helping. Well, this is what my hand looks like today. Most of the scabs are gone except for the base of my finger where I had that big hole because of that nodule. I'm working on getting rid of the swelling in my fingers and also in the back of my hand using the electroacoscope to try and get rid of the edema. My fingers still look like little sausages but the acoscope seems to be helping to get rid of the edema and most of the pain is gone and getting ready to start doing some more intense conditioning for my hand other than just doing the chi energy balls. So. I'm just grateful to uh, have my hand be healing up. It's truly amazing, the healing powers of the human body. Well, here's what my hand looks like today. The scars are healing up pretty good, and uh, the hole in my finger is basically closing up. The only problem is now is that my fingers are still pretty fat because of the edema and just not being able to do anything with my hand for six weeks. And so on the backside, my fingers are still pretty fat too and they're like little sausages and the knuckles of the little finger and the ring finger they definitely hurt so I've been doing heavy massage on my fingers and trying to get rid of that edema and treating it with the acoscope every day just to try and get rid of the edema and that that seems to be helping a lot but it's funny how much my right hand wants to get involved in the action and take over everything that I'm doing that I've got my left hand doing now there's certain amount of competition going on and uh, my left hand is fighting for recognition to shut down the battle going on in my brain between who wants to do what with which hand so it's pretty entertaining so I recommend that everybody use your non-dominant hand as much as possible just to see what you can really do and just enjoy that dialogue between the right brain and the left brain well here's the latest on my hand that it's healing up pretty good. That big hole at the base of my finger is almost gone. Big problem now is, is that I have a hard time closing my fingers any more than this. 
my fingers are still a little bit fat from uh, just the edema and also on the other side they're still pretty fat especially the little finger and the ring finger so I'm doing massaging on the knuckles and massaging the fingers to try and get the edema out of there so that I can actually uh, you know use it more today I decided to start going to um, the gym to start working out so I started going to the YMCA locally and using the machine where you exercise both your upper body and lower body so I'm excited about doing that well here's my report for today I took the Dremel tool to the base of my finger to see if I could get rid of the scar tissue and the rest of the scab so that I could actually close it but um, that really doesn't seem to work so I'm still having problems closing it and uh, scars are healing up pretty good and uh, my hand still is pretty fat and my fingers are still pretty swollen. I just got done working on it with the acuscope to get rid of the pain. For some reason my little finger hurts. So that's crazy. But I've been using an exercise ball on it. And so I've been squeezing it with these little uh, things. Maybe I'm squeezing it too hard. Um, but, uh, you know, that's, that's the way it goes. I'm anxious to get my hand working again so I can get back into tennis so I'm going to continue on doing whatever I can to try and get it to heal but uh, maybe a little less aggressive well here's my hand today it's still healing away and uh, yeah, it sort of hurts inside where they did the surgery and my fingers are still pretty swollen and so is my hand but you know I just discovered that uh, using ice on my hand and my fingers is a really good way to basically reduce the swelling so I'm still working on trying to get my hand to close um, it's still going in the good direction so I'm hoping soon so I can get back to tennis so I can use both my right hand and my left hand to play and just integrate my brain and use both my left brain and my right brain so I can have optimal performance like I showed my students how to many years ago well, I'm definitely making progress on my hand. The scar tissue is loosening up a little bit. I'm using the uh, roller balls and squeezing a rubber ball and uh, using ice and using the acuscope. And it looks like that uh, my swelling is going down a little bit, which is a good thing on my fingers, my little finger and my ring finger. So, you know, it's healing away. I took the Dremel tool to my hand again just to try and uh, get rid of some of that scar tissue that was where... I had that big giant hole so I'm really excited about uh, trying to get my hand to work again so I can start doing tennis with both hands and show people how valuable it is to use your right hand and your left hand to get your brain hemispheres working together well here's what my hand looks like today the uh, scar tissue on the outside is doing a pretty good job um, on the inside it's still pretty tight I'm trying to get my fingers to close all the way but I can't quite do it it seems that uh, you know my fingers, the one where I had the surgery and the one right next to it, seem to be pretty fat and the joints hurt. So I'm forcing him to uh, close. The doctor has me doing that, squishing him down. So I try to use my other thumb to push down on him and that sort of hurts. But you know, he says do it as much as you can. Um, you know, pain is a good thing when you're trying to break up the adhesions. So that's a good thing and plus, I'm using a ball that uh, is harder to um, squeeze than the other one that I was doing, that pink one. So I'm squeezing that now as hard as I can. I'm just too truly astounded by how much adhesions there are from all the um, surgery that went on in the hand. But you know, I can basically feel them breaking up as I do exercises. So I'm just working away. Well, here I am today with my hand. Uh, it's time to uh, do the Dremel tool on my hand just to try and get rid of the scar tissue. I'm still having a, a hard time bending my fingers all the way in, but it's been almost four months. And uh, today I'm going to start doing the 22 push-ups in honor of the 22 veterans that are committing suicide every day. But first I'm going to go ahead and Dremel tool some of the scar tissue so it would be easier to do the push-ups.
secret is to grind down just enough so you don't get into the into the flesh itself because then it starts bleeding and then it really hurts. I've been doing this for a couple of weeks now. It really helped dremeling the scar tissue um, and also the scabs so that I could get it to heal faster and just try and get uh, more range of motion in my hand. But this area where I have where there was the big uh, big hole from the cyst I had in this area that it's really impinging on my ability to close my hand and my fingers so thank God for the Dremel tool I have to use it on low and with a finer grain so I don't really eat a hole in my hand but you pretty much get the idea